In this video, we'll write the balanced net ionic equation for CaCl2 plus Cs3PO4, calcium chloride plus cesium phosphate here. So let's first balance the molecular equation and then talk about the states. For the molecular equation, it looks like I have three calciums here, just one here. So let's put a three here. Those are balanced. Now I have two times three, six chlorines. Let's put a six over here. Those are the chlorines are balanced, but now I have six cesium atoms, three here. Put a two here. The cesium atoms are balanced. I have two phosphates. That's okay because I have two phosphates here. That's the balanced molecular equation. Now we need to write the states for each substance. If you know your solubility rules, chloride's very soluble. So we'll put an AQ after that. That's going to dissolve. There's really not a lot of data out there that I can find on whether this will be soluble, aqueous, dissolve in water, or insoluble, which would mean it's a solid. We're going to go with aqueous. That's what I see mostly in kind of the school-based resources. And cesium, this is in group one on the periodic table. In general, they're pretty soluble. So we'll go with aqueous, and then at the end, I'll just show you what it would be if we treated this as a solid. Realistically, we're more interested in this side of the equation. So we're going to write AQ. We're going to say it'll dissolve in water, dissociate into its ions. Calcium phosphate, though, phosphates in general for group two, transition metals, these are insoluble. So we're going to write S here for solid. When these react, this will be a solid a precipitate. It'll fall to the bottom of the test tube. Chlorides, very soluble, AQ. So we have the states. Now we can split the strong electrolytes into their ions for the complete ionic equation. Calcium group two would be two plus, the chloride ion is one minus. Three calcium ions, and I won't write the states right now, let's write that at the end, plus three times two, six of the chloride ion, Cl minus, then we said we're going to treat this as aqueous. Cesium's in group one. It has a one plus ionic charge. The whole phosphate, three minus. Good one to remember. Two times three. So we have six of these cesium ions, and then we have two of the phosphate ions. So these are the reactants in our net ionic equation. Now for the products, we don't split solids apart in net ionic equations. So that's just calcium phosphate. Then we have the cesium and the chloride ions, so six cesium ions, and then six of those chloride ions. These are our reactants. Now we can cross out the spectator ions that appear on both sides. So in the reactants, we have six chloride ions. We have that in the products. Cross it out. Six cesium ions and in the products here. Cross that out. What's left, that's our net ionic equation for CaCl2 plus Cs3PO4. Let me clean it up, write the states in, we'll have our net ionic equation. So this is our balanced net ionic equation for calcium chloride and cesium phosphate, and this is aqueous cesium phosphate. You can see charge is conserved. We have three times two plus, that's six plus, two times six, three minus here, that's six minus. So this all adds up to zero for our charge. This is a neutral compound, its charge is zero. You count the atoms up, they're balanced as well. So if you have an aqueous cesium phosphate here, this is what you get. Let me just quickly show you what you get if you treat this as a solid. So we change this to solid, and we end up with this. So this is our complete ionic equation, and then the spectator ions, these six chlorides, we get rid of those. And the rest of this, that would be our net ionic equation if we treated the cesium phosphate as a solid. I would expect at a general chemistry level, your teacher would tell you whether this is aqueous or a solid. This is Dr. B with the balanced net ionic equation for calcium chloride plus cesium phosphate. Thanks for watching.